Well, we've been trying to point out the changes in the moon's orbit and the planetary orbits. We're trying to show you the whole solar system has shifted. And last night was a good night to see where we were at as the moon was following Regulus over the horizon. The reason that's so significant is because Regulus, as you can see by this picture, defines the ecliptic. If Regulus could leave a mark where it has traverses, you would, it would leave a mark that's directly on the ecliptic. So coming up over the horizon, if the moon is left, it's north of the ecliptic. If the moon is right, it's south of the ecliptic. We don't think it's north, and we've criticized Earth sky before for misrepresenting the position of the moon with relationship to the ecliptic. We had a supermoon. The supermoon is significant because it's created by the influence of planet X. We didn't used to have all these supermoons once upon a time. Then they came, and now they're kind of softening away again. So that's kind of cool. And so, you know, the, the supermoons were, were beautiful. We enjoyed the light show, but it, it really, you know, it's, it created a lot of havoc with the king tides. So now we look at the ecliptic plane, and we see the moon's orbit traditionally it spends most of its time either above or below that ecliptic. How far below does it get? 5.09 inclination or declination. So when the moon is subject to the greatest amount of tidal influence is right now because of this 90 degree alignment. As it comes around Earth, it's subjected to the maximum torque exerted by two objects is when they're 90 degrees to one another plus there was a sun jupiter alignment that uh, itself creates tidal influence by this diagram you see it takes 18.61 years or i round it off to 18 and a half years for the moon to go from the descending node to descending node or the ascending node to the ascending node the nodes are two places where it crosses the ecliptic on this inclined journey when you goes from ascending node to descending node that is 9.3 years okay and if it goes from ascending node to ascending node that's 18.61 years they call that a draconic year but we were trying to prove the moon was too far south and indeed like all the planets were too far south Here's Regulus. Regulus is at the top of the screen. It came up from the lower left. The Moon, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus all paralleled the path. Jupiter was further than 1.3 degrees. Here's a picture of it. 1.3 degrees. That's its declination. So it could never be more than 1.3 degrees below the ecliptic, ever. And in fact, most of the time, it spends its t journey in between 1.3 south and 1.3 degrees north. So if you were to take a picture of it, and it appeared to be 2 degrees, or 2.5 degrees north or south of the ecliptic, its orbit had changed. And so, you know, using Regulus as your ecliptic path maker following it up from the horizon you know all of these things came from the lower left hand part of the screen and ventured up to the upper right hand part of the screen across across the screen well the moon it looks pretty far south that looks you know four or five degrees at the most so you know we're looking at some incredible inclinations here and when somebody puts up a diagram like this, saying the moon is north of the ecliptic, well, now it's time to really look at the ecliptic with relation to Regulus and see once and for all, has the moon crossed the ecliptic? Has it touched the ecliptic? Has it reached the ascending node? 
and it was supposed to have reached the ascending node, according to Wikipedia, in 2018. And once, Wikipedia did say 2018. But now, I don't have that screen capture, so how do I prove it? Well, I have to prove it by a more difficult scientific um, research. And so what we did is we went out, first of all, to watch Regulus rise, and they were chemtrailing. They were chemtrailing pretty good. And just the eastern part of the sky. Uh, they weren't doing the western part of the sky. So, you know, watching Regulus come up over the horizon, well, was virtually impossible. So we waited two hours, and then two hours later, it was even thicker. So they prevented us from looking and seeing where the moon was with relationship to Regulus. But the moon was supposed to come to the ecliptic in 2018. In fact, in 2017, it brushed Regulus. So it was very close to the ecliptic. And in 2018, it brushed Regulus again. Planet X passed directly underneath Jupiter directly underneath Saturn. And this, it was as close to our solar system as it was going to get in this southern corridor, that is. So then, the moon ended up never crossing the ecliptic. And now is a good time to prove it, because now, if it was supposed to cross the ecliptic in 2018, it's, it's four years later. It's almost at its highest point above the ecliptic it's maximum inclination four and a half years plus four and a half years is nine years above the ecliptic so we're you know 2018 was supposed to be the lunar standstill according to some of the documents so how do i prove that the moon should have been on the ecliptic in 2018 and there's ways to do it you have to look at the eclipse history. Yes, because the number of eclipses goes up the closer the moon gets to the ecliptic. And as it goes around the earth, it passes directly in front of the sun and then directly behind the earth. And, and we have lunar and solar eclipses. And then either side of that day, the lunar standstill date, when it reaches the ascending node or descending node, which is on the ecliptic, they call it a lunar standstill, they call it a draconic year, they have ways to define when the moon makes this spectacular uh, draconic ending to a year. And in 1991, we had six eclipses. That's a pretty good number. Normally, we have four or five. And I believe n nine years, remember a half, half a draconic year, uh, it comes back to the ecliptic, uh, reaches the opposite node. And, I just, and then in 1982, nine years prior, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, seven eclipses. So six is, and seven are the highest you're going to get in a year. So we're defining where the moon was by the eclipses. So the lunar standstill was in 1991 and in 1982. And then if that was true, then we would have six eclipses or seven in the year 2000. And we look at the year 2000. Look at this. We had a partial solar eclipse July 1st. And 30 days later, when the moon came back around, it eclipsed again. Two eclipses in a month. That tells you the moon was on the ecliptic. Because why? Because the sun defies, defines the ecliptic, as does Regulus. So let's go forward nine more years. And we got six more eclipses in 2009. So what's the deal? 2008 and 2010... We had five eclipses. So the sun was m blocked out maximum. The moon was passing behind the shadow of Earth on, on those, those years. And here's another, a, a type of s 
a solar soros eclipse. It's a it's a type of eclipse that occurs when the moon's on one of the nodes. And look, they have it designated for what? July 2018. But wait a minute. We didn't get another six eclipses until the year 2020. So 2020 was the year the moon finally reached the ecliptic. After brushing Regulus, coming close to the ecliptic, well, what happened in 2018, 2019? Well, that's when Planet X passed underneath our solar system. It's closest approach from below. So in, tw- in 2020 is when we had our standstill, which is not really a standstill, but it defines the end of a draconic half year. It uh, defines when the moon reaches the ecliptic on one of the nodes, the ascending or descending node. And in 2020, we had six eclipses. So by the eclipse calendar, the moon should have been on the ecliptic in 2018, but didn't reach it until 2020. And the eclipses do not lie. So so then we go out to, you know, watch Regulus arise and they came trailed over it and and to me you know people were saying they're they're using it to hide things i think they're using it to hide planet x they're using well i mean we we knew as a radiation mitigation attempt to prolong the inevitable to soften the impact of this radiation and heat upon the masses They, they do care huh maybe maybe not they prolong their their game, they enrich themselves even further, but you know the chem trailing has made life easier for for outdoors people for uh, golf tournaments, for I mean for tennis tournaments. Some tennis tournaments were canceled because of the heat. Um, I mean, you for car races for baseball games, for football games that are outdoor, you know, the, the trailing was was helpful in spite of the downsides that it presents. And one of the downsides, as you will see, is forest fires. Because aluminum oxide, the primary ingredient in this, these geoengineering clouds, is in fact an accelerant. But so we we never got the chance to prove uh, with respect to Regulus where the ecliptic was and where the moon was in relationship to the ecliptic. And but with a little research, we saw that we could still find when the moon was actually supposed to cross the ecliptic. And what we found completely disagrees with what's in Wikipedia today. We told you it was changed from a crossing date of the 2018 to a much later year. Now, we looked at the eclipses. We had seven in 1982. Nine years later, we had six. Nine years later, we had six. Nine years later, we had... Then in nine years later, in 2009, we had six. And then... We were waiting for 2018 to have six, and we had five. And we didn't have six eclipses till 2020. So the moon made it almost to the ecliptic, but failed to cross the ecliptic in 2018 and 2019 because of the southern influence of a very close brown dwarf fragment with a high magnetic and gravitational influence. I'm interrupting this video. I have recorded it three times and things keep changing by the hours. And by the time I get around to trying to upload it, there's a new development. The new development is that, remember, there was supposed to have been a full moon on March 17th. And yet, on March 18th, we had one of the largest supermoons we've seen in over a year and a half. 
amazing, simply amazing how huge the moon is. So I ask you, when was the full moon? When was a real full, full moon? Was it the 17th of March? St. Patrick's Day? Or was it the 18th of March when it was much bigger? So now I got to make another video about the moon. And until next time, be prepared, not scared.